Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12. They got a king. And they got a king to fight for them like they wanted. Well, they felt they wanted. When they hashed the Ammonite came after them and uh, stood up against them. So we went over last week and... Uh, one of the things they said at the end, after they had won the battle in 12, they said, and the people, they said unto Samuel, they came unto Samuel, and there's only one, two reasons they come unto Samuel. Uh, number one, to say they thought Samuel was still in charge. Or, they went to Samuel to say, hey man, you, weren't you the one that said that a king wasn't going to do well? And they kind of misinterpreted uh, what he said. He said, this is the kind of king you want. And he said, this kind of king you're, you, you're going to get, it's, this is the kind of king you want. Did you want a king? You want a king like every other nation? Now, people don't realize that's what they asked for. They asked for a king like all the other nations. All the other nations, kings can't be like a king of Israel because it's a different type of, uh, different type of government. Israel is under theocracy. So in order to get a king like everybody else, okay, I'll give you a, like everybody else. What? Some stingy, selfish man. That only cares about himself. Why? Well, that's what all the nations have as a king. <laughs> just look at us. Look at our king. He just wants it. What, what we call, you know, a president. Uh, he's never really won an election, and and he just go. He just does what he wants. I mean, this guy's stealing everything, you know. But he's, he can't even prosecute his son. <laughs> dead, dead to rights, man. Like talk about. If any court in the world would have been like, you're, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're, don't even come, you're guilty. We'll just, we'll just do it, just come right to, to prison. Nah, man, they just do anything they want. Why? Because that's what leaders are about. Mm -hmm. That's how leaders work. They're, nobody's above the law, yeah, but you. Yeah. And that's how, uh, that's how kings have ruled this planet. You know, that, those ways. They're not righteous like the Lord. Uh, don't worry. When he comes back, he's going to take everything. He's going to take care of all this. Okay? I mean, we, we kind of look, but you have to understand something, people. You're not getting any of these great benefits and rewards. You are getting spoiled, but you're not getting all the great benefits and reward. And the reason why is you get them when you get home. We haven't had the award ceremony yet. It's called the Judgment Seat of Christ. And you'll get the things when we go home. Amen? Don't expect it now. Don't expect God to, uh, you guys You guys got to stop expecting God to discipline our government. They're not his kids. He's only worried about the church right now. He's not worried about all of them. He tells you what's going to happen. But he doesn't turn around, I'm going to put my arm up and go after him and everything else. Don't worry, they're going to get theirs. They'll all consume themselves if they can. And it'll all be under the direction of the Lord who's pulled his hand back and said, go ahead at it, guys. And he knew exactly everything that was going to happen. Amen. This is the way it goes. All right, so, uh, but they came up to Samuel, and, and what did Samuel do? He renewed the kingdom. He went down to Gilgal, where they have the, you know, the military post down there, and, uh, they, you know, set up a ceremony, and, and they uh, made, made Saul king in front of everybody, right there in Gilgal, where the most the assembly area is, where they're setting up things. They set up things from the battle that when they came over uh, the Jordan and they with Joshua, where they set up Gilgal. Gilgal's going to have an importance from then on. Uh, and we'll see later on uh, how much of an importance it is. But uh, he kind of passed the torch. But when you pass the torch, it's great to pass it. The, the ceremony passed the torch. Okay? But now you've got to understand something. Somebody's going to have to step down. It's easy to step past the torch. They passed the flags at a command ceremony. Uh, 
the guy comes out with a gut with the fl with the Italian flag or or the guide on, and he, they hand it over uh, to the first sergeant who is the keeper of it, and the first sergeant uh, hands it to the lieutenant colonel. Uh, the colonel gets it, and then he hands it to the new company commander. Like you know, uh, that's how it kind of works. Uh, it gets handed to the kit to it, and it goes around. And it goes back to the new commander. And the new commander, he's the new commander. The new, the old guy who's the old commander, he's got to go. He's got to leave. Why? He doesn't need, everybody will come back to him. How, hey, hey, uh, did he do that right? Uh, what's the right way to do this? Uh, and they start asking him questions. Okay? Well, and, and, it, and, and also there's a lot of gossip that, that'll go on if he's, if he's still there. Uh, best thing a commander does is uh, a new commander come in, uh, get rid of the old guy. What's that? Everything he has, take it out of his office, take everything out of him, and get rid of him as soon as possible. If he has paintings, paint all the walls. So he's out of there. Everything. Take his locker and put it outside if you have to. Why? You don't need him no more. You've got to be. You got to. You got to establish your command. Yeah. And that's what they're going to do with. Uh, that's what has to happen with Saul here. Okay. Uh, so he passed the torch, and now he's going to have to take his uh, step, and. Um, you have to, we're going to read down. It says, And Samuel uh, said unto all Israel, Behold, I've hearkened to your voice. I gave you what you wanted in all that you said unto me and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you. And I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are, are with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken, and whose ass have I taken, and whom have I defrauded, whom have I oppressed, or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore it you. Let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you, Lord. Uh, just ask you, Lord, bless the preaching, the teaching. Thank you, Lord, for all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so, uh, like it says, and it says, Samuel, he comes up, and, you know, uh, he, he's kind of, you get to a point, man, he's getting old. You know what? It's time. He's sick of fighting battles, you know? Sick of, sick of you get to a point, man, it's like, I'm getting old. I, I don't, I can't do this no more. Okay? Uh, there has to be a point in your life where you say that, you know, everybody gets to that point. That's why we do have a retirement age. We do have one. And there's a reason, there is a reason for that. You know, I, I mean, you can't go out in the field and start hoeing, hoeing lawns and, you know, hoeing uh, dirt and everything by hand anymore at, at, a, at an older age. And it just, it's not as good. The stamina isn't there like it used to be. People get old. People get old. And so do leaders. I mean, look at, look at, Leaders get old, what happens? They forget things. They're sitting up there. I mean, we got Bumbler, Babbler, whatever his name is, and he can't even say things. I mean, let's face it. I don't even understand what the man's saying anymore. You know, nobody does. Why? He said he's old. He's old, decrepit, and, he, and guess what? He's also insane. So it kind of helps that way. Amen. But uh, <laughs> the other thing is that it's... Um, this was, there's kind of a, uh, there's kind of a, um, this was the people's idea. They wanted a king, and remember I was just bringing it up that when they asked for a king, they asked for a king that was like all the other nations. We want to be like all the other nations. We want a king like them. They didn't think about it as saying we want, a, we want a monarch. They didn't. They said we want a king like, be like all the other nations. Oh, okay, we'll get you a guy like all the other nations. One selfish guy that goes around, he's a, he, he's a tyrant. And uh, we'll give it. We'll give you him. How do you How do you like this? Uh, it, you know, it's a good experiment. It just so you know, the experiment doesn't work. The experiment doesn't work. God has to intervene, and the experiment's going to intervene real fast and real soon. Okay. And uh, he says, he said, I have hearkened unto your voice. I gave you what you wanted. Okay. Uh, the people are thinking, what? Well, we're sick of these battles. We're sick of going out and having. Uh, 
people call us up that we have to fight here and we have to fight there and region here and region there. Uh, uh, let's get a king. He'll, he'll fight for us. And, and that's the problem is that people think that if they get somebody else, that person will do all the work and they can sit back and do nothing. What really happens is you're going to pick a guy and he's going to make you work. Why should he do it? He's the king. See, you're thinking he's going to serve you, and what he's going to do, he's going to come in and make you serve him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because that's how it always happens. Okay? Uh, they just want to put the onus on somebody else. And he says, I have hearkened your voice, and in all, uh, all that ye have said unto me, and have made a king over you. I, I've done my part. And now, behold, the king walketh uh, before you. Look at this guy. Okay? Uh, I'm a small guy. He says, I'm old. I'm old and gray-headed. You got what you wanted. What's that? You got a big guy. Look at this guy, okay? You wanted a bigger man. You wanted a man that looked good. You wanted a GQ. Uh, I gave him to you, okay? And he says, I'm old. I'm old, and guess what? I'm also uh, gray-headed. You know what the Bible says? The hoary head is what? Like a crown to a man. But people don't think that anymore, do they? They like to see... They like to see the poster boys and stuff like that. I mean, when I was in the army, uh, it, w it was my uh, I had a platoon sergeant, and this guy we had, we called we 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 looked at him and we said, well, he's always the guy we sit up front. You know, when you get pictures taken, you get this guy. This guy was uh, he used to put his hat on like this, and, and and he used to always make sure nothing, everything was pressed and everything else. He couldn't leave for, 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 you know, save his life, but boy, oh boy, he looked good. He looked good. We had another lieutenant, and now he could lead, uh, and he, he was a very good guy, uh, but, and, and he was like six foot three, and that guy, man, he looked good too. So we used to get like 30, 30 to 40 people, put them behind him, and put them up front and go, yeah, that's who you're dealing with. We all stand in the back. Why, who wants Dumpy Me to be out there, you know? <laughs> The short guy that uh, with the big nose. Yeah, we want that guy. Why right, everybody will look at it and go, hey, 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 what kind of unit is that? <laughs> you put the big guys up there and everything looks good. Get the guys that are tall, get them in the front. Amen. So uh, they look good. Well, here we go. We got it. Uh, he says, I'm gray headed and I'm old. And uh, he says, and behold, look at this says. He says, my sons, my sons are, are with you. Go back to uh, chapter 8. And uh, if we remember, it says in chapter 8, it says that, um, And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he uh, made his sons judges over Israel. And it names them Joel and Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. Uh, notice it's uh, his father's in Ramah, uh, is in Ramah. Uh, they're down in Beersheba to the south. Remember, it goes to the city of Dan to Beersheba when they talk about Israel. That's what, a southernmost city. He's up north, they're down. They don't have any supervision from daddy or nothing because they wanted to get away from him, I guess. Uh, but look what it says in verse 3. And his sons walked not his ways, but turned aside after a lucre. They liked money and they took bribes. And look what happens. They perverted what? Judgment. So they didn't want his sons. And he says... But he says here, he says, behold, behold, just so you know, my sons are with you. Now, that can mean two things. Number one, they like the situation too. Or, you don't like my sons uh, being your judge. Uh, you got a new king right there, and you didn't like how my, my sons were judging. Uh, get your king, and he can handle my sons. He's the law now. There's a new sheriff in town. You don't like the way my sons were being judges? Guess what? Take care of it. Amen? And, uh, you, you know, he says, uh, my sons, you didn't want them, but guess what? Uh, you can take care of it if you don't like him. And he says, look at this, and I have walked. I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Okay? Uh, he says, look at I've walked in front of you. I haven't hid. I've been always up front. Okay, uh, and if you don't like anything, you need to take this to your new king, basically. Uh, verse number three, behold, here I am. See how he says it? You don't like the way I walked uh, in front of you. What? Behold, here I am. He says, 
Witness against me before the Lord. Uh, let's do this thing face to face. Do it right now. Okay? Not, not on Facebook. Uh, no, don't send me no certified letters. Okay? I got this, uh, this church sending me certified letters. I mean, sending me letters right now. Uh, I don't even open them up. I send them back to them. Why? I don't, I don't even recognize them. I hope they're watching. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they got nothing better to do. <laughs> they're getting junked from their pulpit. <laughs> All they do is talk about protecting the church. We're going to protect the church. Therefore, we'll get rid of everybody and protect the church. Next thing you know, you'll all be howling the pulpit, and nobody will be inside. Hey, protect yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you don't need to protect the church. God does that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, he says, "Before, be behold, here I am. Now, come on out. Witness against me before the Lord. And before his anointed, you got your king there. He can sit there. Uh, whose ox have I taken? Okay? And, and, or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? You told me my sons are taking bribes. And they, you know, you said it. You said that they were taking bribes and stuff. I haven't done this stuff. He says, get somebody out there. I haven't done this stuff. Or, or of whose hand have I received any bribe? to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore, I will restore it to you. He doesn't do it in private. He does it in open. He lived the ministry, and um, he, had a, he, had a, he had a good report of all men. Uh, and he says, you know, there's a time you have to, you got to stand up now and, and say there's a time you got to stand up. Look, uh, one thing they used to do when a preacher would get old, he'd leave or, you know, whatever. He used to get up and stand up and say, has anybody got anything against me? It's my last day. And uh, then, then he leaves, you know. Uh, has anybody got ought against me? You know, did I do something? Do I owe you anything? Okay, if you do, let's stand up. Let's get this over with now. Uh, verse number uh, four, and they said, uh, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you. you. You just put it out. He will have no honest charges against me. The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Uh, what they're saying is that's the truth. He's witness. We say it's all truth. Now, uh, they've all said it right there. The elders have said it. It's the truth. Uh, you have no honest charges. Um, he wasn't in it. You have to understand something about Samuel. He wasn't in it for the money. I, I'm not in it for just saying, no, I'm not in it for the money. I don't care less about money. You know, uh, money, the only thing I got to do is I got to pay bills. Other than that, you know, I don't, everybody I know that has a lot of money in the world, very unhappy. Very unhappy. Mess. Their family lives, mess. Their kids, mess. And you know what they do? They got a, all they got is a Facebook family. Yeah. Let's get the pictures together, and that's about all they got. You know why? Because when they stop the pictures and they go back home, and they go back to the rooms, they're still a mess. <coughs> Mickey Rooney, how many divorces does that guy have? Like 40? <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor, she couldn't even find anybody else to marry. She started repeating, marrying them again. Yes. Rich people. They got, they're crazy. They're insane in their head. They, oh, I can get this done. And what do they do? Haven't you noticed anything around them? They're always taking that new step to do something to pervert a nation. That's what rich people do. That's who they are. No character whatsoever. And everybody thinks they do because they have money. And if you're that type that thinks because somebody has money that, that, that and you take their character by the, how much money they have in their wallet, you're the problem. I don't care if President Trump comes in here. He sits down and he gets the gospel. I don't stop every day. Let me tell you who he is. Who cares who he is? He, he walked out of that world and walked into this church. And when he comes in here, he has nothing. He's no different than anybody else. And that's how he should be treated. Whether If we invite the mayor and the mayor comes, yeah, we do so. We want to get the guy saved. But if they barge in here, sit down. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's how it should be. Amen. All right, so verse number six, and Samuel 
Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced uh, Moses and Aaron and that brought your uh, fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. Okay, so he's going to turn around and, and go through a little bit of history lesson here. And Samuel says, okay, now you need to, need to all stand here. I'm going to give you, talk to you about something. He says, and he says to him, it is the Lord that advanced Aaron and Moses. It wasn't me, and it wasn't no prophet. I, under, I, I just anointed Saul. But years ago, it's always God that putteth man up, and God that puts a man down. Okay, and he says, he says I, I, I advanced Moses and Aaron, and what did he do? He brought your fathers. You want to talk about the Lord? Let's talk about the Lord. He's the one that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Why? Well, sheep need shepherds. Mm -hmm. And these are my sheep, and my sheep, they need shepherds. You know what? I, you'll always hear from so I'm going to go follow the Lord. I'm going to go follow the Lord. Uh, yeah, uh, well, who's your pastor? Yeah. Well, I, I don't need no pastor. You ain't following nobody. I remember Don Merritt talked to a man, and he, he, he was here, and the guy said he had a ministry. Don Merritt turns around, and he goes, yeah, what church, what local church you out of? The guy says, uh, none. He goes, you know, you, God don't use you. Just like that, right to the guy, he says, God, God won't use you. God don't use you, and God won't use you. Yeah. And what you'll find is these Lone Ranger people out there. There's a whole bunch of them. They, they think they're Lone Rangers. What you're going to find is they're just disobedient Christians that are backslidden. Amen. 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 You want to serve God, he's going to put a man in front of you and say, serve him, serve me through him. Yeah. Amen. That's how God works. Mm -hmm. The problem isn't that. The problem is always comes to the point where you don't like the guy yeah. that's put over you. Amen. And you shouldn't be looking at it that way. Look, at God, look to the Lord. Now he says, look at verse number seven. Sheep need shepherds, and now therefore stand still that I may reason with you. you ever notice that God, when he wants to talk to you, says, what, I'll, I'll reason with you. Hey, come, let us reason together. Though your uh, sins be uh, like scarlet, they shall be what? As white as snow. Let's reason together about things. You've got a reasonable God who wants to reason with you. He's not sitting there trying to punch you all the time. And actually, I don't see much in punching you. Uh, I notice that other people come along and punch you. He does what? He just doesn't protect you. Amen. So it says, I, I want to reason with you before of the Lord, of all the righteous acts of the Lord. I, I want you to understand the history of these things, which he did uh, to you and to your fathers. It says, when uh, Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers uh, cried unto the Lord. You notice he's, that's a remembrance thing. There's a remember here. What's that? You remembered the Lord. He, you cried unto the Lord. What happened? Then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron. He sent you shepherds which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. Don't you remember that? But what happened? Verse number 9, and when they forgot their Lord God. Here's the other portion. you got to remember, then you got to forgot. You want to remember the Lord? He'll, 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 he'll take care of you. He'll, he'll do things for you. He'll, he'll send somebody to take care of you. Uh, you don't want to, you want to forget the Lord? Here it goes. And when they forgot the Lord, what did he do? He sold them into the hands of Sisera, captain of the hosts of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against uh, them. Uh, you know, you both remember the, 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 this stuff and the Lord. And you remember Sisera. Uh, he's in, he's, that came along. That was back in that book of Judges. You remember that area where God was in charge and, and, and he was making the decisions and, and the judges were there and delivering you? Uh, yeah, that's right. You don't want that. You got Saul now. And he's bringing it through the ages of the judges. And he's, and he's telling them, look, uh, uh, this, this is what happened. When you remember the Lord, he took care of you. When you forgot the Lord, he sold you. He took his hand off you. And he says, and he tells them, remember that incident with Sisera and the Philistines? And, and remember the king of Moab for 70 years? Uh, we were over them, and then they were over us. Uh, and, then it, and then he says, uh, the verse 10, and they cried unto the Lord, 
and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hands of our enemies and we will serve thee. Now, I looked at this and I said, there's something here. And then I noticed. Look at verse number six. Something I noticed in here. Look at verse number six. Now, verse number six says they, the, the, that I heard your cry. And I sent you Moses and Aaron. You know what they did? They took you over the Red Sea. What's that? They delivered you. They, they were in deliverance. That's deliverance. You cried upon the Lord and he did what? He saved you. He delivered you out of the hand of Egypt, out of the hand of the world, okay? Now look at verse number uh, 10, and it says, And they cried, now they're out of the world, they're saved, and now what? He says, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because of we have forsaken uh, the we have forsaken the Lord. And, and, look, and, and, and I thought, and I said, wow, look at that. This is after salvation. What's this? This is fellowship. That's what we were just on in 1 John chapter 1. Truly, our fellowship was with Jesus Christ. You know, uh, our fellowship together, if we're going to have fellowship together, uh, guess what? Our fellowship together is Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's what we're having right here, a fellowship tonight. And guess what? It's about Jesus Christ. Truly, our fellowship is with who? The Father and with Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. Amen. So the first in six was a deliverance. And if you look down at ten, in that we will serve thee. What? Service now. Now we have service. Okay? Uh, you've forsaken the Lord. And, 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 and you got these, you, you know, go out to sin with this stuff. Verse number 11, it says, and the Lord did what? He sent Jerubabah. And then he has another name here. Look at this next name, Beden. Now this grabs all the commentators to run into the book and try and make this guy Samson. Because Samson is from Dan. Okay? Uh, I even look at the book I have, this reference down here, and he says it's Samson. Because see, he's saying B. Dan is a son of Dan. Well, guess what? It can't be. I'll show you why. Look at the first name. Jerubabal, right? Look at the third name. Is a guy by the name of Jephthah, right? Okay. And, uh, and then look at the last name is Samuel. So you got three names there. You got Gideon, which is Jerubabal, right? You got Jephthah, and then you're going to have Sam Samuel. Did you notice something about all those three names? They're all in chronological order how they came through the judges. The last judge, named judge in the book of Judges, is who? Samuel. I mean, excuse me, in the book of Judges is, is uh, Samson. And Samson was, it says in the Bible, when it, Samson comes along, it says that he started to deliver. He didn't deliver them. He started to deliver them, in fact. Most disobedient judge. So the first thing I'm going to say, he's going to say is, well, then who's be Dan? Well, let's look at some things first, and uh, start your start to go to uh, uh, Chronicles, the books of Chronicles, First uh, Chronicles chapter seven. And in seven, uh, verse number seven, uh, seven, 14 first we'll look at. Look what it says. And the sons of who? Manasseh. Isn't that a tribe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ephraim and Manasseh, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now look at 17. Now these are all from the tribe of who? Manasseh. Now look at verse 17. It says the son of Ul Ulam. What's this guy's name? Bedan. And guess what? These were the sons of Gilead. That's not in. Uh, that's not in Dan. Gilead. That's Mount Gilead up north, a little up north. Uh, what's that? Ephraim, Bob. 
something in that area, yeah. or, Ma or, or Manasseh in that whole area. Uh, these are sons of Gilead that, 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 are, that, that have done this. The only thing I came up with, and, and I just stopped it right there, was uh, I, I figured that these guys were one of, uh, there's a guy named Jer in there. And he had 30 sons. They, they were on, uh, remember the ass cults? And he yeah. didn't have any problem during that time. In between, uh, in between um, Zerub, uh, Gideon and Jephthah, in between them, there's a guy in there that has like 30 sons. And he doesn't have any right. trouble during his time. And maybe it's one of his sons. Uh, Jer was his name. Uh, or the only other thing, it's it, the only other guy that lives in between there that's actually placed in there and, and talked about is Abimelech, and that's the one that got the, the, the thing came down, the lady threw the rock basically and smacked him on the head and he died. He was not a good guy. He was the bramble tree that Joe Ash talked about, if you remember. Amen. So, uh, like I said, sometimes you'll get to an area and it doesn't really, the Bible doesn't really say much about it. And this one doesn't there, but everybody likes to jump on that and go, well, that's got to be Samson. This Bedan means of, uh, of the tribe of dead. No, it actually means the son of judgment. It means the son of judgment. That's what it means. Amen. Well, let's look, go further on this and, and let everybody else worry about it. You'll notice another thing in verse number 11. It's, uh, it's the number of judgment, and it says, And the Lord sent Jerubabel, Bedan, uh, Jephthah, these, uh, those deliverers, and who's the last one? And Samuel. Isn't it kind of odd that Samuel's actually speaking right here? Yeah. And he mentions whose name? Awesome. Himself. In like a third person. I gotta tell you something, that's kind of creepy to me. I used to watch Seinfeld years ago, and there was this guy who had these funny looking shoes, and he used to, stay, his name was Jimmy, and he used to, he used to talk in third person, Jimmy says, and Jimmy does, and Jimmy this, and Jimmy that. And then George picked it up, and George was saying it, George this and George that. You ever hear of somebody that speaks to themselves in the third person? It's kind of wacky, isn't it? <laughs> and here's Samuel. I say, Larry, you dumb idiot. Yeah. Yeah, we say it like that, like an exasperation thing. Oh, Larry, I can't believe I said Oh, Kirk, you're dumb. My wife's standing over there going, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's two against one, honey. <laughs> Amen. So uh, now he, he says, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies, okay, uh, on every side, and ye dwell safe. Now they called upon the Lord. What did they have to know when they did? You got to acknowledge sometimes uh, your condition to get anywhere. Do you realize that if you can, if you're one of them people that can actually determine your, you can self-judge yourself, you'll get far in life because you'll understand where you are. The problem we have is most people can't. They think they're better than they are. That's the biggest problem. They exaggerate to themselves. They can't live up to their own ego. Amen. Verse number uh, 12. I said that very fast. Nobody comes back on that one. <laughs> Verse number 12 when he says, and when... And when you saw Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, you said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us. I mean, despite all that you have, uh, you want a new government. That's what they want. You think a government's going to change? Hey, look, uh, uh, we need a new king to reign. Hey, uh, you know something? Uh, things are getting bad. We need another administration. Uh, and then the guy gets up there, and what does he preach all the time? Change. We need change. Change. Change what? Just change. I got to tell you, man, that's all I hear every four years. And guess what? Nothing's changed. It's always gotten worse. Yeah. Change from your pocket, my pocket your Yeah. That's all it ever changes. Changes from one pocket to the other. That's yeah. about it. There's no such thing as them changing anything. Uh, God says what? Man doesn't change that way. He's always the same. What's that? He's evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's wicked. And he's deceitful. And if they get in charge, that's where they're going to be. You should have had God in charge. Yeah. Amen. So, he said, you want a king to move over you. Now look what, and now this is where you're at? When the Lord, what God was your king, look at what it says in 12. You want change when the Lord was your king? You want, a, you want a new government over God's government? 
You see, that's why the millennium has to happen. What's that? We're too stupid. We need, some, we need a good example because none of the examples we have ever worked. No government has ever, ever, ever worked on this planet. So we're going to need the real one that's going to work, and that's, that's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And when somebody gets out of line, with, when Christ is in charge, believe me, they won't get out of line a second time. Amen. 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 So uh, verse 13, Now therefore, behold, the king whom ye have chosen and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you, God gave you what you wanted. Now, look at that first word in 14. If, what's that conditional? you got to do something. That's why. If ye will fear the Lord, and do what? And serve him, and obey his voice, and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Did you notice that that is packed up in an A-B statement, and it's telling you the same state... See, Larry shake his head. He said, yeah, why? He's been listening. Yeah. <laughs> I go to Job all the time, don't I, Larry? Yeah. The A.B., he was perfect and upright, one who feared God, eschewed evil. A.B., A.B., well, it's right in that sentence. Again, what's that? If you fear God, right? If you will fear the Lord and serve him. What's that? Faith and service. Works always follows faith. And he says, work, he says, if you'll fear him, and you'll serve, uh, what's that? Obey his voice, okay, Hear, hearing, and, and do what? Not rebel against his commandment, what? Serve, A, B, right there. Obey his voice and fear God. Serve and obey his commandments. Then, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue uh, following the Lord, uh, your God, okay? Uh, you need obedience, man. That's what he's basically, look, uh, you know, you need obedience to the faith that you have. There's a lot of, there's a lot of hua, but there's not a lot of do in this world. You see, a lot of hype and a lot of talk, uh, but there's really not that much happening. I, I got to tell you something, if everybody, if every Christian did their job, if every, we wouldn't, this place would be full. There wouldn't be enough churches in town. There's 10 churches in town right now. You're lucky to get 30 in every you're lucky to get 30 in three of those churches right now. Above 30. And there's 10 of them right just right here and I'm not talking about in the outstanding areas and stuff. I'm talking just in this town, just in the village, just right here. There are 10 churches. Uh, just so you know this town should already be converted. Why isn't it? They haven't done their job. If we've led over 50 people in here, guess what? We've done our job. They have what they call, they don't even know if they do their job. Why? They don't know. They don't preach the gospel. You know, do you realize that, uh, I'm going to tell you how it's done. I can see it. I see it all the time. Uh, you, you know, most people don't even get it. I'm going to tell you what, you've got a lot of false conversions. They're sitting out there in churches. Because preachers don't preach the gospel, do they, Larry? No, how many times did you hear in any church other than this church that Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day? Where? He's been to every church in the area. I went to all those churches. I didn't hear that either. Now, let me ask you something. Can you get saved without the gospel? No. Isn't that something? So what they do is they tell you how to get saved without telling you why. 15, 1 through 4. And I know everybody goes, well, I know that. No, you don't know. No, you don't know it. You didn't take it to heart. And then you just walked over. The guy told you like this. He goes, you know, you need to repent and, 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 and believe the gospel. He doesn't tell you the gospel. Repent and take Jesus into your heart. That don't work. You don't have any reason to do it. You have no reason to do it. You haven't been preached the gospel at all. And now you got a whole bunch of people that think they got Jesus in their heart and they're playing games. The best thing a preacher said one time, I got up there and I, I knew it was, in, it was a Great statement, and probably got off because there's nothing new under the sun. He said that if you get rid of the King James Bible out of the, out of the church in time, what you'll have is a building full of fake Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. All those churches, like so they never preach King James Bible. Yeah. They never even gave him the word of God. He said it. He, he would tell. He, he came in here. The first thing he said, do you preach the gospel? And I said to him, what do you mean? First Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 4. It's, he goes, I'll be here next week. 
Amen. That's all he wanted to hear. Why? Because he's been traveling around. They don't preach the gospel in churches. I've been to the funerals. They don't preach the gospel at the funerals. They tell you how to get, they say, uh, to help you, and if you take Jesus into your heart right now, you repent, take Jesus into your heart, you'll get saved. You could do that all day and you ain't getting saved. Right. You have no reason to get saved. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Not according to man, not according to anything. It's according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's the God we, we worship. And if you're going to get saved, you're going to get saved by the gospel. And somebody better preach it. Because you've got to know, understand your condition. The Old Testament gave you the law. What happened? You died. Christ came and gave you grace and truth so that you can live. And it's never been, it's not preached. And it's no, they're preaching just a, 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 a Catholic little invitation on steroids. That's all it is. Bunch of, bunch of, I, I get mad at it, but that's what it is. <laughs> Amen. I'm happy they're saved, I guess. Uh, verse number uh, 15, down, down low, he says, but if you won't obey, you don't want to obey the voice of the Lord? You want to rebel against the commandment of the Lord? Uh, then watch what he said. Then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. I had to punish them. I had to chasten your fathers. Now, therefore, stand and see the great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest today? Hey, it's June. Did you just pick up on that, people? Yeah. It's yeah. June. What happens in June? Wheat harvest. Yeah. What else happens in about June time? Pentecost, yeah. Feast of the Weeks. What's that? That's going to be your time when you're gathered up and out of here. The harvest. Amen. He says, it's not wheat harvest today. I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive that and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord. In asking you a king, he says, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to give you a sign. What's that? I'm going to give you rain. Now, what's so big about that? Hey, the stuff's growing out there. What's so big? It, 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 uh, it, it doesn't rain in that time of year. That's why they harvest. They have what's called the nether rains and the latter rains. Before the season and after the season. In between, they don't have the rain where they're at. Okay, so this is going to be a, a big thing because they don't have it uh, there. And, and he... And, um, it doesn't rain during this time. Uh, let's go over to Proverbs chapter 26. Watch what it says in 26, verse number 1. As snow in summer. Do you get snow in summer? No. Nope. Okay. So no. Uh, and as rain in harvest, see? Yeah. They don't get rain in harvest over there. So honor is not seemly for a fool. He doesn't get no honor either. Yeah. It's, out of, it's out of place. That's what he's trying to tell you. It's out of place. And that's what, what they're saying. As rain in, in the harvest, it's out of place. It don't rain at that time. Uh, verse number 18. So this, is, this was a great sign. And he, a sign is something to come. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord, and who? Samuel. Samuel. They're, they're, they're fearing the Lord, and they're fearing Samuel. Uh, you know what, basically, uh, they're saying at this time, we made a mistake, guys. <laughs> we, we just made a mistake. You, you can't, can you hear it in their voice right now? They're sitting there saying, as soon as that rain starts to come, and they see, man, he was true, and Samuel's been talking this whole time. He's told us we've been messed up. Let me tell you something. It really gets into your head when he says something's going to happen, and it happens like that, and something great like that happens. they got to say, hey, man, we really screwed, the, screwed this one over. You know, uh, you think you're escaping the book, but you haven't realized it. It's, you're not. You're going to be judged by it. That's basically what you're looking at. And Samuel, and, and, and all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we, we die not. Why is that? For we have added unto our sins this evil to ask for a king. And Samuel said unto the, uh, the people, Fear not. Fear not. 
Ye have done all this wicked, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Okay? Uh, you don't want to, he's like, look, um, you don't want to fear like, like as if you're under some kind of like taskmaster or something. You need a real fear, uh, a fear of God, not a fear of man right here. Uh, that's more towards the towards wickedness. Uh, God's not a taskmaster like that. You know, you need to respond the right way. You don't need to run from him. You need to follow him. You need to go get closer to him. He says, verse 21, Turn not aside, for then should you go after vain things. Don't run away. You'll be going after emptiness. God's full and full life is with him, which cannot profit nor deliver. Why is that? For they're vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of times in the Bible, if you haven't noticed it. I mean, it's like, I think right here, in, 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 it's like 12 times or something that, to tell you what, I, I give you a complete government, God's not going to forsake you. And he says, why is he not going to do it? For his name's sake, for his great name's sake. Do you realize that God, when you got saved, it wasn't because he wanted just for you? What do you think, you're important? Do you know why he saved you for his name? Because he said he'd do it. And guess what? He'll save you. Yes, he loves you. Yes, he thinks he, he, he loves you enough that he'd send his son and everything else. That's a pretty big love. So don't think it's not there. But don't think too highly of yourself. It's his son he's wearing. It's more towards his son. Everything is. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for his son, you'd burn up. You'd be burned up. Uh, verse number, verse number uh, uh, 22, he says, For the Lord will not forsake for his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. I got a lot invested in you guys. You ever, have, you ever invest a lot in something? You don't like to see it fall apart. You know, I, I put a lot into this. Why would I want it to fall apart now? And that's what he, I put a lot into these people. I don't need them to fall apart. I've invested a lot of time in this. Uh, verse 23, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against uh, the Lord in ceasing to to pray for you. He's so Samuel basically saying, look, I know I'm, I'm, I'm out of the form of control here. I'm not going to be the leader anymore that you uh, wanted me, that I was for the Lord. But guess what? I, I still got a prayer ministry. Hey, look, you may be old and you may not be able to walk the, walk the streets and knock doors, but you sure can pray. Somebody needs to. Believe me, I, I'm telling you, there ain't many people praying today. We need to get back to it. You know, get a conversation going with the Lord. I, I ask, I, I'm telling you, prayer is one of the things that I notice that everybody seems to have a problem with. They're struggling with prayer more than anything else. And, and, and because it takes work to pray. People don't realize that. It takes a lot of work to pray. Uh, probably of everything you do, it takes more time and more effort to pray to God than it does almost anything else. Uh, it's easy. I go to Larry all day and talk to him and, and, and witness to people, uh, whatever, you know, talk to people, witness to people, be nice to people out there. Why am I a man? It's easy. He's a man. Now he's talking to you to God. It's a lot different, huh? So we all struggle with that, uh, with those things. I, I try to give hints out. Look, uh, if, are you struggling? Uh, sit down on your chair and talk to God on the other chair. But he's not in the other chair. He is. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he say you communicate with me friend to friend? Mm -hmm. What kind of friend are you? You can't even talk. You're ignoring the guy. Let's get back to talking to him. Okay? Not just a grocery list. Start talking. Right. You wouldn't talk to your friend like a grocery list. Okay? Now give him respect in there, because he's God and the Lord. Amen. We've got to get back to the way of saying the Lord too. Not just God, the Lord. Why? You need to understand something. You're in a relationship with him. Don't let anybody take it away. Amen. The whole world's out there with generic God, generic God, generic God, generic God. I see him come in here, all the young ones, all the ones that come in are midian. I come in one day a week, I mean, come in one day a month or whatever. They're in and out. They're in and out. They're the experts on it, but they only say God. 
Right. Don't you ever notice that? Why is that? Because they're not praying. They have no relationship with him. He's just God. Yes, they're saved, but that's it. <coughs> it's the ones that are going to keep coming weekly, 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 weekly. What's that? They're the ones that actually have a prayer to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He says, uh, verse 23, be, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing not to pray for you. I'm still going to do this. But, now watch what he says. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you the good and the right way. Uh, what's he going to do? He's going to, pay, he's going to be a preacher. What he's supposed to do? He's a circuit riding preacher. He's going, to, he's going to get back to teaching and uh, preaching. He's, he's still going to teach. He's still going to get up and do these things. Verse number 24, only fear the Lord and serve him. You have to have your head right. He says, only fear the Lord. You should only be fearing God, fearing our Lord, and serving him. How? In truth. That's right. In truth. Mm -hmm. That means by that book, not adding your own stuff. Well, you know, God will like this. He'll like it if I talk in all these other weird, this weird language thing. That's what God wants me to do. I know it. I got, 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 God's happy. Mm -hmm. You don't get the funniness of that? That does. That's hilarious to me. So, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, and I, but I will teach uh, you the good and the right way. Only <laughs> fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. What a way to go. For consider how great things he hath done for you. You know what you need to do? You need to have a wake-up call. That's what that is. You need to wake up and realize that what, what you have, God's given you everything. And you just don't sometimes get to that point. Well, you know, I bought it. Yeah, he gave you the job. Oh, I don't know. I went for a resume. Yeah, the guy could have said no. Yeah, amen. None of you, I don't know about you, man. Even in my bad times, I still had meals. Yeah. Look, we're all the people that went through bad times. The new kids, they really haven't gone through bad times. You're the last of the group that understands being poor in bad times. This is it after this. You've got to tell people about these things, too. Your kids and stuff like that, even though they, they don't listen when you tell them about it. It's like it never happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And I think we embellished a little, you know, walking, walking to school both <laughs> ways uphill, you know? In the snow, six feet. But um, he says, now, he says, you gotta, he wants you to fear the Lord. He says, for what? For consider how great things he hath done for who? You. For you. It's personal, okay? It's personal that way. Uh, how many times you, uh, you didn't even do anything sitting there? You didn't do a thing. You didn't even lift a hand. And it gets taken care of, and you're, you walk right into it. You can't even take credit for it, and everybody gives you credit and, and the Lord's sitting there going, look at what I did for you. They're giving, look at that, they're making good things of you. You know, the worst thing you can do is go like this at that moment. <laughs> Amen. But we kind of do, don't we? And God looks past it. Why? He's really good to us. He even knows we're going to do that stuff. Now, look at this last part. He says, verse 25, But, but if, Ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. You better stay on the good path. I don't care if it's you and your king. Keep your king on the right path. Why is that? Well, you better, uh, I, I know something that's going to come on. And you know this, this era from Saul all the way to Zedekiah, 490 years. And you know what happens in 490 years? Goodbye. That last statement is a 490 year statement right there. He says, but if you will still do wickedly, what happens? You shall be consumed. And they were consumed in the book of Jeremiah. When Zedekiah, uh, when they were sieged, they were sieged three times. And then the last time, they, they burned down the house, and they burned down the temple. And they destroyed it, didn't leave a building up on the, in, building up on the hill anywhere. And it was all just flattened. And you know what? Ye shall both be consumed, both you 
and your king. You really wanted this? This experiment's gonna run 490 years. Let's see how well it does. Amen? How'd it do? Not good. The wrong guys are always in charge. Amen. All right. Some of them were right guys, but they were still wrong guys. We needed, we needed Jesus Christ in charge, and someday when he gets there, let me tell you, this is all going to be... You, you haven't seen anybody lead until you've seen him lead. Amen. This, there's not even... You can't even evaluate his, lead, his leadership. The reason why is because you don't know anything that good Amen. to put the standard against. That's how good it's going to be. Imagine an uprising like they have. Oh, you know, they got these people rioting in the cities. What do you think Jesus is going to do? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be done real fast. <clears throat> that, that'll be over real fast. Yeah, I can get it over with fast. Just get all the dis get all the combat veterans, give them all weapons, and tell them to take care of their own cities. Yeah. They're all sitting there waiting. Just so you know, they're banging their they're banging that stuff. Going, let's go. Let's get this going. The only problem is nobody's ever, they're still afraid to put their neck out there. Yeah. See, this would not have happened if it was in the 1950s, before 1950. None of what's happening today would have ever happened. Men would have gotten up and just charged down there and they would have thrown <laughs> Joe Biden out of that office if they had to. Yeah. You know what? They would have thrown Trump out too. <coughs> they wouldn't have been able to put up with any of this. But they put up with that other idiot, FDR, and he was a terrible president, so what do you want? All right, let's pray. Our Father, thank you. We pray, Lord God, that you would help us with this to get it to our hearts. Let us know that we need to look away from the civil governments and the civil leaders and, and look towards the great leaders, the leaders that you put in charge, Lord, and the, and the leader like Jesus Christ who will be in charge and is in charge. Lord, be in charge of our, our lives here. We need you, Lord. And, uh, Lord, uh, we try to obey, and we try to get past our shortcomings with with our prayer lives and, and with our reading lives, Lord God, and our communication with you lives, Lord Father. Lord God, please help us. Please help us through these times. Please help us till we see thee again. We thank you for it, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You rock. Who's on? Maggie Lax is on. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Amen. <laughs> uh, Marilyn's on. Stephanie's on. Hi, Stephanie. 